one. And hello, everyone. My name is Mike Cleveland, and I'm here in Washington State. I have the privilege of talking with a new friend whose name is Lee. Lee is in Texas. And Lee, I'm so thankful that you took your time to come and say hi and share your story a, a bit today. And, and it's good to see you. And how are you doing? Well, Mike, every day, every day is another step forward. It's a, uh, it's a uh, finding some light and, and some love, and and it's a, uh, it's a process. We we all need that light and love, don't we? Um, and it's good to talk with you today. And uh, we've talked a little bit before I started this recording, and you're sharing your heart with me, and um, been through some some rough waters, some deep waters, and um, I. I I'm looking forward to you sharing. We've talked uh, in advance about going through a scripture together. We like to frame these testimonies by the word of God. And so we've agreed to go through Psalm 107, 10 to 16. If we can make it all the way through there, we'll see. Um, but let's, let's look at the first verse here. And uh, Lee, I'm reading from the Amplified. And mine says, some dwelt in darkness and in the deep, deathly darkness, prisoners bound in misery and chains. And uh, Lee, I can tell you that described my life for decades. I, I sat in darkness, um, bondage to my flesh, to impurity, uh, sexual impurity. And it just described me in, in very vivid terms here. And how about you? I know these, this is true of you as well. And in fact, we're all born this way, aren't we? You know, they, in, the, in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and, in, Adam and Eve, uh, you know, committed original sin, it was, it was to be the, the, the way of mankind from then on to be born into sin. And, um, you know, you don't you don't really think about it until it comes down and slaps you across the face. Yeah. Yeah. The prisoners bound in misery and chains um, describes a life of no freedom, right? Where we're just doing what sin tells us to do, doing what our temptations tell us to do. And for me, this was, you know, this was decades of this type of being bound um, how about you, Lee? What can you look back on your life and just make a quick summary? I know we've talked about sexual impurity and uh, things like that, but when when can you look back and see that this really started? Um, infidelity from the time that I got married thirty years ago, and there was periods of infidelity throughout my marriage, and um, you know, the sexual impurity, it was just, uh, it was just a morass of sin. It, it was, it was a way of life. And, and I've, I've always been a Christian, but obviously I, I turned away from God and sought the ways of man. And as you, as you seek the ways of man, you rebuke God. And, um, finally it all came to a head and, um, I don't know, my, uh, my journey back is, has been going on now for a couple of months. And um, there was a time six weeks, eight weeks ago that was just the absolute lowest, just like a, a, an addict. You know, when you hit rock bottom, I was at rock bottom spiritually, just completely in the darkness and the deepest gloom. Uh, prisoner suffering in iron chains. That was me. I, I was, my, my marriage was broken. My, um, relationships with my family, my children was broken. I had betrayed their mother and, and my wife. And I was at a place that was really, really dark and I didn't really have anywhere to turn. And so kind of in desperation, you know, I turned back to God. And it was through me turning back to God and reaching out to, to some of my friends, you know, lifelong friends, that I found the, uh, the Setting Captives free course in, in, in Purity Boot Camp, the 30-lesson the 30 course. 
and that became part of the healing process for me. That's you mentioned this re, basically rebelling, you know, against God. That's what verse 11 says. And, you know, for me, Lee, this rebellion took the form of bitterness against God for some of the things that I felt like, you know, he didn't do right by me. Of course, this is warped thinking, but that's the way I thought. Um, if you have verse 11 there, uh, can you read that? Yeah, it says, for they had rebelled against the words of God and despise the counsel of the Most High. And then I think verse 12 is what you just described at the period of eight weeks ago. Mine says, therefore, he humbled their heart with hard labor. They stumbled, and there was no one to help. And, you know, this is where we end up as we continue pursuing the lusts of our flesh. It's inevitable that we get to this place of stumbling and humbling. Humbling and stumbling is where, you know, you probably described yourself eight weeks ago. Lee, just share a bit about that. I know it's hard, it hurts the heart, but I think someone listening needs to hear um, of this experience in your life of eight weeks ago. What, if you don't, if you don't mind, what was that like and, and what happened during that time? Um, I had had a, uh, another not, not the first, not the second, not the third, one of many um, episodes of unfaithfulness to my wife. And she found out about it, and I lied to her about it, told her we were just friends, this other woman. And um, after about a couple of days of that and so many holes in the story, I just basically said, I can't lie about this anymore. And I, I told her the truth and it was just devastating. She was just, just broken because she had taken me back from another indiscretion two years ago. And I tried to be faithful in my own way and it, the ways of man and it didn't really work. And I didn't really have Christ. You know, I've always been a Christian, but I did. I wasn't seeking God. I wasn't. I wasn't using uh, the tools available to me to 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 stay on a righteous path. And I just went my own way. And and uh, so when I left, um, when I left home that day, I uh, sad to say, I left home that day. The first thing I did is I went to a bar. I just went in and had a couple of drinks, and a uh, bartender asked me, so how's it going today? I just kind of shook my head, and she says, rough day? I'm like, yeah, rough day. And so I went, I went uh, to one of, the, one of the men that I, I work with. I went to his house and, and kind of shared with him what was going on, and so we were going to go together to go have some more drinks. And I said, you know what? I just, I just need to be alone. I, I need to sort this out. And I don't, I don't really want to go drink anymore, but I want to, I want to go home and uh, just sort this out, be by myself. So I came back to my apartment and for about two days, I didn't, I don't think I went outside. I just sat in here and just, contemplated how my life could be such a just a miserable miserable mess everyone that I cared about I had hurt a uh, wife that I've been married to for almost 30 years and I loved dearly I would just broken um, I felt like a uh, the lowest of the low uh, I, I felt like a soulless man and I, I didn't see I didn't see any way to ever get the grief off my heart to get the sin and the guilt out of my, my head. And I just, I felt like that uh, the man of integrity that I intended to be had completely left. And what was left was a, a sinner. And all I, all I found looking through the Bible, looking for answers was that uh, the depths of hell awaited. And um, I, I just had, I, I didn't know where to turn. So I, like anybody else, when you're, when you have nowhere else to turn, you turn to God. 
and and I did that. Well, that's what verse 13 says. Uh, do you have that? If you can read 13. It says, then they, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. It's verse 13 and 14. So if you look at that, you, you're looking at the work of God. You're not looking at the work of us. We didn't bring ourselves out of darkness. Uh, we didn't break our own bonds apart. This is a divine um, work that we can experience. And Lee, as you, as you look specifically at verse 14, um, he brought them out of darkness and deepest gloom. And that's the way this happens is that 2,000 years ago, Jesus went into the darkness. When, when he went to the cross, if you remember, it was pitch black. As he hung there on the cross, he had entered our darkness for the purpose of rescuing us, uh, for the purpose of removing our sin and our guilt and our shame. And so he went into this deathly darkness. He hung there under the wrath of God. Lee, he took all your sin. He, he died under the weight of it. He shed his blood willingly, freely out of love for you. Um, as you look at this, Lee, what does that thought do for you? And, and how does this affect you as you think about the cross? Well, when I, when I was at that, that really, really low place where, where I, it, it, was, it, it couldn't be any worse, um, and, I, and I, I just got down on my knees and, and just – I confessed and I repented and, and I just asked God to, to strengthen me and show me a way out that, that I couldn't do it on my own. And um, when I think about how the, the 30 lesson course about setting captives free and, and purity boot camp showed me a roadmap to find my way out of that darkness to wash at the cross was one of the first things that, that came up and it, it allowed me to get rid of that load that I carried in, on my heart. And it, and it allowed me to find an appreciation for God and what he did in sacrificing his son or sending his son to, to die for our sins. It, uh, First of all, it, it humbled me greatly because I didn't feel worthy. I didn't feel like I deserved that. There was, there was a lot of people that, that deserved forgiveness, and I didn't feel like I was one of them. And secondly, it, it, it showed me the love Jesus had for us because he knew before we were ever born what our actions were going to be. And knowing that I would be as poor a man and, and as, as uh, bankrupt of character as I've demonstrated, he also knew that I would come back to him. And when I came back to him, he, he knew that it was with a, a repenter's heart that I sought him and that I had to make changes in my life because what I was doing was obvious, obviously broken. And it was, it was Jesus that, that allowed me to unload that guilt. And it didn't happen overnight, but it was a process as I continued to go back to the cross. And he allowed me to, to unload that burden of shame and he allowed me to get rid of that, that feeling of, of inadequacy and replace it with something that, that I, with a, with a love that I didn't, I didn't know was out there for me. And that is the power of the cross. <laughs> to, 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 really what happens, Lee, is we are loved out of our sin. Um, if, if again looking at the cross, if, if you look at verse 14, that last phrase and broke their bonds apart, 
Um, this is how he sets captives free. I think about when he was in the, the Garden of Gethsemane and, and Judas came with the band of, of people there and it says they bound him. You know, he willingly submitted to being bound so that you would have your bonds torn apart and broken asunder. Um, he was led to that cross so that you could be free. Uh, he took your guilt, your shame away from you uh, so that you can be entirely free from it. And as, as you and I are here right now, we don't deserve any of this. Like you said, we uh, are, are not um, deserving of any of this grace. But Lee, he gives it freely. Uh, he pours out his love on those who are undeserving. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, this is a beautiful, powerful message, isn't it? It, it was the, truly the, the only light that I had. My, my path was so dark and gloomy, Mike. It was, um, it was just a, a path straight to hell. It was, it was just despair and, and shame and guilt. And, um, you know, Jesus, Jesus basically lifted me up out of that, that morass and, and, and showed me that there is a, a way to have a different life and to be a different person. That's important because the person that we were needed to die. Um, and so it's not just that Jesus died for us. We died in him. Our old self, my old man that loved to commit sexual immorality, that gratified the lusts of my flesh, that gave in to temptation, he died. He was hung up on a cross. That title above the cross might as well have said Mike Cleveland because my old self died. Lee, as you look at the cross, you see not only Jesus dying, but you, your old man who lived that way was crucified with Christ. What, what does that do to you as you think about that? I just, I just am overwhelmed with, with um, gratitude. And, and at the same time, I, I feel like that God's called me to share this story with, with someone else who maybe thinks that there's no hope for them or that they've, they've sinned to, to such a level that, that, God will cast him aside and forget about him. I just know that where I was at, I didn't, I didn't feel worthy of anything much less faithfulness and love. Um, but what he, what he showed me through, through his son, Jesus is that there is hope for, for all mankind and especially for the repentant heart and the, and the sinner who wants to, wants to find a way out there is a way out and uh that way is through jesus and through the cross and and the old lee the old man lee has uh has died and and i'm not real sad about that <laughs> and uh there's a new lee here there's a new lee here that uh has got a uh a new lease on life um you know, I'm repairing damages that have been done, you know, through that my acts. Is it, I, I made my peace with God. Now it's up to me to make peace with, with man. And, um, you know, my children and my wife, we're, we're all working on repairing those relationships. And I just, uh, I, I, I don't have anything other, other than, than Jesus Christ to thank for that. Because without him, that, that, that repair would not have been possible. You, you, the first thing you mentioned uh, as I asked you that question is just a sense of gratitude. And if you have verse 15, let's, let's close with that, 15 and 16. So let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. As you think about those verses, let's give thanks to the Lord. Um, you know, you, your, your heart is tender right now, and I can see that. I, can, I feel that with you. Um, he has, in essence, tilled up the soil. You know, as a 
ground is hard, it can't receive the seed. And for decades, my heart was pavement. Um, and then he began taking me to the cross, Lee, and, and showing me the extent to which Jesus went to to rescue me, to break my bars of iron. Um, and if you look at verse 16, it's a miracle, right? These are our gates of bronze. They're bars of iron. You can't cut those. You, you, this is not something you or I could do. It's a miraculous work of God that he's doing in you and me right now. And let's give thanks to him. Uh, let's thank the Lord, Lee. Let's, let's praise him because he did what you and I could not do uh, in destroying our sin, putting it to death, removing it from us as far as the east is from the west. Now, you're repairing relationships with your wife and, and with your, your kids, um, and this takes time. And one of the ways that we do it is because remember this, that he does not treat us as our sins deserve. It says in Psalm uh, one. Uh, 110, I believe. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. One of the reasons is because he treated Jesus as our sins deserve. So he doesn't treat us accordingly. Now we take that to our family. When, when they are, are angry, upset, when they're railing out, if they don't forgive, we don't treat them accordingly to their sins either. Now we give grace and we love and we're able to because he has filled us up with his spirit. That's one of the principles in the purity boot camp is walking by the spirit. Um, is that something that you are experiencing, the walking by the spirit as you look at the cross and the resurrection of Jesus? You know, I, it, it's, it's ironic. It's ironic that you mentioned that because just just day before yesterday, no, it was yesterday, Sunday. Um, I went to where my wife now lives and where our home was, and we had a conversation. It was a hard conversation, very difficult conversation about about where we each were in, in this in this recovery, and the trust that's been broken, you know, is 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 still deep, and it's it's a it's a it's a big step. And for her to be gracious enough to even consider taking me back, I'm very thankful for that. But what she said was something that I I didn't I didn't really like hearing it because we're kind of on two different uh, time frames for how this this reconciliation was going to happen. And when she told me that it 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 wasn't it wasn't what I wanted to hear. And I just asked God to to give me patience and, and wisdom and strength to to take her words and not turn them back in in words that weren't kind, that weren't filled with love back to her. And I I don't know if I could have done that before. And that is walking by the Spirit right there um and the wonderful thing about walking by the spirit lee is that when we walk by the spirit we don't gratify the lusts of our flesh so we don't live the way that we have lived for the past decades and this is the power of the cross to break our sins the power of god's spirit to enable us to walk out our life differently than we have before uh, Lee, I, I count it an honor and a privilege to talk with you today. I'm, I'm loving the work that God is doing in your heart, your life, your marriage, your family. There's people who will be listening, watching this, who feel like they are where you were eight weeks ago. And they are in darkness. They are at the low point. Um, Brother, what would you say to them? What words of hope can you offer them? Where would you tell them to look for help? <laughs> to the cross. <laughs> Got to look to the cross. When there's, when there's nowhere else to go, God is faithful. 
um, when you're in your darkest hour, God is faithful. And he knew before you were ever born that you would be at that place. So it's not going to come as a surprise to him, and he's not going to turn away from you. And I just, I just know that had it not been for me finding God, I, I, I don't think I would have harmed myself. But the thought crossed my mind: would the, would the earth, would the earth be a better place without me? You know, would my wife and family be better off without me than me continuing to hurt them? And uh, I, I just know that if I hadn't found Actually, he found me. I didn't find him. He found me. If I had not been found, um, I don't know, the the ability to get up and go through, go to work and, and work through this, this whole process of, of healing and of, you know, patching up things with people and, and people that I love uh, would not have been possible. And the first step is just to, to go to the cross and, and just tell, tell, tell God what you're sorry for. And tell him that you want, you know, that you want to, that you want to do better, that you repent and, and ask for his help. And he's a faithful God. And he will help you. There is a way. And that gives hope to people. And I'm going to close in prayer right now. Uh, let's pray. Father in heaven, you are the God who works miracles. You are the God who breaks chains apart and sets captives free. You are the God who entered our darkness. As Lee, eight weeks ago, was at the bottom in darkness with no hope. You came to him with a message of forgiveness, with a message of new life with a message that says, I will do for you what you cannot do for yourself. And you've loved Lee, and we are both, Lee and I, praying right now for someone listening to this, someone watching this. Father, would you show them that there is hope for them? Would you turn their eyes to the cross as Lee encouraged them to do? Would you lift their head to look up and to see a suffering Savior, a dying lamb, one who was wounded for their transgressions, one who was bruised for their iniquities. And Lord, I pray that they might see that in Jesus dying, their sins have been removed from them. Their guilt has been crucified. Their old man, their old woman, their old self has died. And they now come out of the tomb a new person, a new creation, able to walk by the Spirit and not gratify the lusts of their flesh. Lord, thank you for the time that Lee and I spent today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Lee, thank you for your time. you have any closing thoughts? Oh, Mike, I thank you for your course. It, uh, it wasn't the answer by itself but it was a roadmap to Jesus and how to find answers. Amen. And that was, that's been a blessing to me and I just thank you for it. Well, thank you, Lee.